Good day, people. So today I'm going to be answering the question, what is Gary's Mod? AKA, what to do in Gmod or how to play Gary's Mod. This is for beginners and people like me who own the game but haven't really gotten into it. And uh, I got a little curious myself and wanted to learn more. So uh, this is basically about how Gary's Mod works in terms of gameplay and game modes. Uh, this is, of course, at this point, an old game. It's been out for over a decade. I've owned it for a couple of years myself, but hadn't really played it. I you know, bought it, loaded it up, went into single player sandbox mode and kind of was like, so now what? <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm going to show you some things here. Uh, I wasn't sure where to start. It seemed like it would take some work to figure out, but I've spent, uh, you know, a little bit of time doing that and realized it has tons of gameplay options and nearly limitless potential. Uh, of course, you see, you know, a lot of big YouTubers playing Gmod and playing all these crazy games. And uh, yeah, so basically, by default, it's a sandbox game. Um, and the default mode is sandbox mode, where you basically it's a physics, uh, creative physics simulation where you can make stuff and put stuff together and do all kinds of crazy things. But it's not, you know, obvious how to do that. And the other thing is that it has tons of other game modes, um, which are basically custom game modes. Each is like a mini game or even an entire game in itself. And most of those are multiplayer. So, you know, starting it up single player, going into sandbox mode, you're going to be like, what's going on? So let me show you a couple things first. Um, in Gary's Mod, you can import a lot of content and enable a lot of content from other games. It started as a Half-Life 2 mod, so it includes some of that content by default. And uh, as far as I can tell, it'll also automatically include Team Fortress 2 content if you uh, download that game, which is free at this point. Um, but you can also add supported content from other games. And you'll find that right here. There's this little gamepad looking thing um, but what it actually does is it brings up a list of games that you have. Uh, a lot of these I don't have installed, but you can see if you just check the box next to um, the games that you do have installed, I've got CSGO, so I can bring in content for that, Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead 2, Portal, Portal 2, um, lots of Source Engine games primarily, and that's just the default like included stuff that Gmod automatically supports, and you just have to check the box. Um, thing about Gmod is that it's again it's it's a massive creative sandbox so people import stuff from other games all the time you can add all kinds of other stuff uh, from the workshop and elsewhere as well and you'll see here there's actually a game mode selector as well so that defaults to sandbox um, I guess again um, maybe it's because I have CSGO or maybe this is a regular default but I have trouble in terrorist town already there as well um, but there are tons of game modes that you can download and play First, I'm going to talk about sandbox mode and how to use it and what you're actually supposed to do there. And uh, then I'll get into talking about the other game modes. So let's just uh, get into it here. I'm going to show you actually single player and you, you can use, again, it's got maps from all these other games. So I can actually load into a Left 4 Dead map um, since I have that. Uh, yeah, I guess Left 4 Dead 2 maybe is incompatible as far as the maps and Portal 2. I had read that actually as well. Uh, so not all of the games are going to allow you to use the maps. CSGO, similar problem. But Left 4 Dead 1, <laughs> I can do that. I can just load into one of these maps. Same with TF2. Again, this was enabled by default. I've got all these maps. I can just load into one at random and, uh, and start playing around. So there's that. Um, basically how sandbox mode works, it's a physics simulation. So you can spawn in items. There's a button by default, it's Q to bring up the spawn menu. Um, and it gives you access to all of the items and, you know, objects and characters and stuff that you have enabled um, in your copy of the game. And what it's going to do is allow you to not only spawn those, but you default are using the physics gun where you can like move them around and you can actually freeze them in space and everything so i'm going to explain all that um you can even build contraptions and cars and you can get into posing the faces of course um all of that stuff it's a little loud in this particular room but uh yeah all of that stuff is kind of in there by default so um i've remapped mine to uh, well, it doesn't matter what I've remapped it to, but basically I can bring stuff in. Um, so here we go. We can spawn a Francis in here. And we can drag him over here. And I can actually uh, pick him up. And you can pick him up by different parts of his body. And you can raise him into the air. And you can um, right-click to freeze him in place. And then you can pose, like move his arm around. That seems to be partly missing. But... Uh, 
I can like move his arm up there and then I can freeze that in place by right clicking as well. So there's a lot you can do and uh, you know this is how like people do machinima and stuff like that and if I go into that menu again um, not only can you spawn in these items and move them around uh, where it gets really interesting is this menu on the right. Uh, hold on I'm just gonna go to a different map where it's not so loud. Okay so here we are this is the the default uh, flat land map uh, one of the default ones and you can see I've spawned in a couple of Zoe's but if I go in uh, to my um, spawn menu again this is where things get interesting over on the right so if you're talking characters like this you can get into you know the face poser and that's where you know people do these famous machinima things and all that kind of stuff and what these tools all do is bring up like a special gun so I can basically just aim that at her <laughs> and uh, it's just gone ahead and done some wacky stuff. But then I can go into this menu, I can like open her eyes and I can do this and that and you can adjust the flex scale, uh, which as you can see in the background there, her, how much um, these changes actually apply to the face and you can uh, mess with all kinds of settings there. And that's where um, basically things can get kind of funny. So. Uh, Again, you know, I'm able to basically use that to pose faces and there's all kinds of other things you can do. Um, you can also bring up like the inflator and I can say, okay, let's get a little bigger there. <laughs> or maybe I just want her to have a bigger foot. So <laughs> there's a lot of very funny things you can do with this. You can also build contraptions like I can spawn in, um, you know, like a platform or a bed or something. And then on that, I can say, okay, first of all, you probably want to raise this into the air um, for what I'm about to do. And I can, again, right click and freeze that in the air. And then I can go over here uh, to the construction side of things and I can add some wheels there. And this is actually how you do that if you want to make like a vehicle or something like that. And you can adjust the physics of it here. Um, so I'm not going to get into a huge amount of detail, but this is basically just kind of generally how it works. And then you just attach those and you have to like do all kinds of settings and stuff to make it actually work properly but that's the basics of it um, you just need to attach things to the right point you can weld things together you can make some giant um, jalopy contraption out of like a bunch of stuff uh, and you can see there you can change like which way these rotate um, which is actually the use key by the way default E uh, as well as um, I should mention that since we're learning I can pick this up and the use key is how I can rotate that around as well. So uh, there's that. And I don't know if this thing is even going to work because I haven't figured out the physics that well. But uh, yeah, I think it needs some work for that to be a functional car. Um, so this is not a tutorial on cars, but that's kind of generally how you use um, the sandbox mode. You can do it multiplayer. I put it in single player, but in the same menu where you start the game there, you can actually choose how many players you want in there so you can actually host and play I assume from that um, and you can play around and mess around and make all kinds of creative stuff in here and uh, you know you do even have like weapons in here so you can you know do a basic death match or whatever and uh, you know, rocket launchers and all kinds of stuff I can shoot at Zoe see what happens see they, they have ragdoll physics so, uh, yeah, I mean, that's it. basically sandbox mode is one giant experiment. And you also have a gravity gun, uh, which you can switch to. Um, there's a hotkey for that. Which, again, Half-Life 2, so as far as I know that, I actually have to hate to admit that I never really played Half-Life 2. But um, I assume that's uh, where that comes from. Anyway, so that's what sandbox mode is. And you can get very creative and do all kinds of just things that are completely nuts in here um but that's what it's really about and uh oh i should mention there's also a context menu by default that's c and that's where you can look at any object and bring up um things related to that so what's related to zoe uh maybe i have to all right anyway context menu and this is also where uh in the context menu you can um you know do things that affect how uh, the game is uh, 
played or what happens to various things but you can also set your character so i have this old man or i can switch to uh something like that and i can even switch to the g-man uh not to be confused with me the g-man from half-life 2 um, and you can also set colors in here so you can set your player color and the phys gun color um, so yeah that's also in the context menu through the menus at the top Anyway, as I say, there are tons of other game modes and stuff, so let's not assume that that is anywhere near all of Gary's mod. It's not even remotely the beginning. So, um, again, there's Trouble in Terrace Town is just one example of another game mode. And, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of like a mystery thing. It's multiplayer, or, you know, people have to figure out who's the traitor and who's and somebody gets to be a detective. There's, there's a whole bunch of stuff, but... Every one of these games is like a whole game in itself and you can download them, you know, freely and play all kinds of different stuff. If you go into find multiplayer, you'll find there are all these servers running all kinds of different game modes. Each of these listings is not just a different server. These are different game modes. These are all different game modes and you can see, you know, that there are huge numbers of servers for some of these game modes. So there is so much to play, in fact. Um, and you can go into the workshop and you can download stuff as well. But uh, it, if you just want to play one of these game modes, the easiest way is to simply go into multiplayer, uh, look at the server list, pick a game mode that you want to play, and just join a server. And what it's going to do is download everything you need automatically from the server. So be aware of that the first time that you join a particular game mode in particular but also if you're joining a new server you may have to download stuff it might be a lot of stuff it might take a while especially if you have a slow connection but uh, these are basically entirely different games and so common examples are uh, of course trouble in terrorist town also known as abbreviated as ttt uh, there's prop hunt which is famously used by a lot of youtubers there's death run hide and seek murder dark rp you can see it has the most servers that's like a very complex role-playing game where you can basically take on all kinds of different roles and there's a lot you can do in there um but yeah these are all just different game modes and there are just so many out there there are zombie survival modes um all kinds of role play you can see all the ones with rp are different types of role play and some of them are based on things like star wars and hogwarts so there's just so much to do in gmod and uh, i haven't even begun um but the thing is not only can you play all of these gmod contains a powerful lua based scripting engine so that you know that's how these game modes are made you can actually make your own if you want to and uh once you have these game modes installed um i'm pretty sure you can set the game mode and host and play you know with yourself with your friends as well um so yeah there's just so much you can do it's ridiculous and uh and uh you can actually make your own if you want to get into um you know coding programming modeling that kind of stuff you can actually make new game modes you can modify stuff you can actually base a game mode on another game mode and just change some things you can import content from other games uh you know modeling and stuff like that and you'll find so much stuff on the workshop you can look at that uh right here in the game um but you can also see that's under add-ons uh and i have nothing added yet but you can open the workshop right here or you can do it in the steam client and find just insane amounts of things and uh you can make your own game modes you can um tweak what you like so basically gary's mod is just a powerful engine for experimenting with games and playing custom games so you can go into sandbox mode and just fool around make whatever weird contraptions or scenes um you know do machinima in there that's it, it's huge for that, but you can also make entire games within Gary's Mod, and there are huge numbers of games um, readily available in Gary's Mod. So this is something that uh, that I've been wanting to get into, and that's why I made this video as much to teach myself as to teach you uh, what Gary's Mod is all about. Um, so I do want to get into Gary's Mod, but uh, let me know what you think. Uh, so rather than being a particular game itself, Gary's Mod is like a base for just crazy amounts of 
different types of gameplay. So let me know what you think. Hope you liked the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time. Let me know if you want me to uh, play some Gmod, because I'm thinking I should. Anyway, bye for now.